The Victorian socialists seem pretty hopeful of an increase at these Victorian local government elections, both in their seats and their statewide vote total, um, voting in the local government elections that closed on Friday. And the Socialists have gone into this election with one seat on Maribyrnong City Council. And now they're really hoping to expand that. They've been campaigning in both a lot of metropolitan areas, but also in rural areas. In some places, they've been one of the only parties um, actually endorsing candidates um, and in places where I guess some might not um, expect the, the Socialists to contest. But look, definitely they, they seem hopeful. And after four years of having one councillor, they're looking to get that up, maybe even uh, a couple more, maybe across some councils. Really, I think when people are not uh, politically engaged, and there's very good reasons for that, you know, people are basically very uh, fatalistic about you know, politics and political change and so forth. So when people are not engaged, sure, I think the word socialism can just take on that sort of, you know, some sort of frightening aspect, if you like, um, typical of, you know, I suppose, right-wing propaganda over the decades. But I think as soon as people are engaged politically, whatever that may be in, it may be in saving a local park, you know, we've had a lot of those occasions, or saving something as simple as a little garden, um, fighting, you know, to open up nature strips, whatever. When those people come forward... The word socialism, it, it does, doesn't even rate a mention. I think on a local government level, though, or on a local level, um, one of the things that definitely rings true to people is, especially those who have seen us in action here in the case of Maribyrnong, is that we, are more than any other councillors, regardless of colour, get our hands dirty in terms of working with community. And we stay true to the view, which we hold very firmly, that change does not come through decision makers in um, institutions of power. It, change has to go through them at some point, but it doesn't come from them. It comes from community action. And that locally is so abundantly obvious. You can't even get a crossing on your street without a petition, without some community action. It just doesn't happen. And on a local level, people can see that so much more clearly. It's harder to see that federally state. Now, the local level isn't the only area the Vic Socialists are targeting at the moment. They've also selected Jordan Vandenlam, aka Purple Pingers, as their lead candidate for the Senate in Victoria at the next federal election. Look, he's gained a lot of attention um, in the past 12 months or so for his activism around housing. He did his shit rentals TikTok series that later became a website which showed off dangerous or poorly maintained properties that were on the rental market. He says he was drawn to the Vic Socialists in part because of their community activism. At the end of the day, I'm a socialist, so I'm drawn to a socialist party. I was drawn particularly to Victorian socialists because I believe um, that I believe in the value of community organizing and helping the community and uh, mutual aid. And I believe that's what they were doing, um, regardless of their success um, in like, you know, council elections or whatever election it might be, because I think that's more important. And I felt like they prioritized that over, you know, election campaigns and stuff. So that's that's the work that I like doing. Currently in our democratic system, what we get is once every four years, you have a say um, in an election. And then we have a dictatorship of the ruling class, which decides everything for us. And we don't get any more input in, into that in, except once, once every four years. Um, socialism is about more democracy and the people affected by the things that they're experiencing, having a say in the outcome of those things. So um, that's pretty much why you should vote for us because we want to hear your voice and we don't believe that, um, you know, your outcomes are only going to be good if you're born to parents who are landlords or own investment properties or born in a rich suburb or like all of those kind of things. We think everyone should have a fair go, um, regardless of where you're from. Meanwhile, we do have the first batch of results coming in from the Melbourne City Council election. That's indicating a close race. Up to five parties and groups have claimed at least 10% of first preference votes. Figures obtained by Six News through multiple sources indicate that in the councillor election, Team Nick Reese is leading a large pack of candidates, but only with around a quarter of the vote. He's then followed by the Liberals, Team Cooter, the Greens and Team Wood, who all have each between 10 at and 17%. Now, the VEC does not provide an official progressive count, so these are just some early results that we've seen, um, noting, of course, the current results are almost certainly set to change as counting continues. You can, of course, find the latest details 24-7 at our dedicated website, localelections.com.au.